IMO 2016 Problem 3 Let P be a convex polygon in the plane. The vertices A1, A2 up to AK have integral coordinates and lie on a circle. Let S be the area of polygon an odd positive integer n is given such that the squares of the side lengths of p are integers divisible by n. Prove that doubled area of the polygon is an integer divisible by n. For purists, I can add a little remark that if the vertices of a polygon lie on a circle, then there is no need to require that this is a convex polygon, because any cyclic polygon is convex. Let's first consider the simplest polygon, a triangle. For simplicity, assume that the first vertex, with coordinates x1 and y1, lies in the origin of coordinates. This problem states that all the coordinates of all vertices are integral numbers, which means integer numbers positive, negative, or zero. It will be helpful to use a formula for the area of a triangle with given coordinates of its three vertices. If you are at the International Math Olympiad and you don't remember this formula, it will be very easy for you to create it. The area of this triangle can be calculated by subtracting the areas of three right triangles from a rectangle. The formula on the diagram shows the area of the rectangle, which in this configuration is x2 times y3 minus the area of three right triangles. After simplification, we get this very simple and symmetric formula, one half of x2 times y3 minus x3 times y2. Of course, in a different configuration, it can be the opposite. So the correct formula uses the absolute value of this difference, which is correct for the general case. If the first vertex, x1, y1, does not lie in the origin of coordinates, we can still use the above formula and simply subtract the coordinates x1 and y1 from other coordinates, which will effectively translate this triangle that is parallelly shifted so that the first vertex will be moved back to coordinate 0, 0. This gives us the formula for the doubled area of a triangle in terms of coordinates of its three vertices. Since any given polygon can be partitioned into a finite set of triangles in the process of so-called triangulation, and it's given that all its vertices have integer coordinates, we can conclude that with given conditions, the doubled area of any such polygon is a positive integer number. This result will be instrumental in solving this problem. Now, armed with this result, we can prove the statement of this problem for a triangle denote the side lengths of three sides of the triangle by a times square root of n, b times square root of n, and c times square root of n, since it's given that the squares of all side lengths are divisible by the same odd integer number m. a, b, and c in these formulas are either integer numbers or square roots of integer numbers multiplied by square root of n. We can use the Heron's formula, from which it immediately follows that the area of triangle ABC contains factor n. The only number in the denominator is 4, which is mutually prime with n, since n is odd. And, this is critical part, doubled area of this triangle is an integer number, from which we can conclude that this doubled area is divisible by n. Analogously, we can prove the statement of this problem for any cyclic quadrilateral. Note that the condition that this quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle is important because we're going to use the Brahmagupta's formula, which is the generalization of the Heron's formula, but Brahmagupta's formula only applies to cyclic quadrilaterals. Since we have proved the statement of this problem, 
for polygons with numbers of sides 3 and 4, we will prove this statement for a polygon with any number of sides by using mathematical induction and prove this statement based on the induction assumption that this statement is true for any polygon with number of sides less than the given number of sides. For that, we will use the Ptolemy's theorem. Ptolemy was an ancient Greek mathematician. This theorem states that in any cyclic quadrilateral, the product of lengths of two diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral equals the sum of products of two pairs of opposite sides. This pattern has probably inspired the Greek dance Sirtaki. It makes it easy to remember. But to prove our theorem, we need to square both sides of equation in the Ptolemy's theorem. We'll get e squared times f squared, where e and f are lengths of two diagonals, of any selected quadrilateral formed by four consecutive vertices of the given polygon. And we know that these two numbers, e squared and f squared, are integer numbers, because the coordinates of all the vertices of this polygon are integer numbers, and each diagonal is a hypotenuse of a right triangle with integer sides. The square of such diagonal is an integer number by Pythagorean theorem, another Greek. If we expand the algebraic expression on the right-hand side of the last equation, we will see that all three terms of this expanded expression have factors n. Opa! This means that e squared times f squared is divisible by n, and from this it follows that there must be two factors of n, n1 and n2, such that n1 times n2 equals n, and e squared is divisible by n1, for example, and f squared is divisible by n2. Now, we can partition our polygon into two regions in two different ways. One partitioning is created by dividing the polygon by AC diagonal, whose length is E, and the other one dividing it by BD diagonal, whose length is F. In each case, the dividing segment has squared length divisible by, in one case, N1, and in the other case, N2. And by induction assumption, in each partitioning, each partition has doubled area divisible by, in one case, N1, and in the other case, N2, which proves that our polygon with a given number of sides has doubled area divisible by both N1 and N2, which means that it's divisible by N. It's possible that one of the numbers N1 and N2 may be equal to 1, for example, in case when the given odd number N is prime. Then the other factor is equal to n. In this case, one of the partitionings represents a trivial case when squared length of one side is divisible by 1. This case also works because the doubled area of a polygon is divisible by 1. This ends the proof. This is a great problem.